In this episode, we look at one single question to help you find your purpose in life. Get excited because this is Tiny Leaps. Big change. Welcome to another episode of Tiny Leaps Big Changes, where I share simple strategies you can use to get more out of your life. My name is Greg Clunas, and in this episode, we are looking at uh, finding your purpose, finding your passion. This is uh, unfortunately one of the questions I get the most of, and so I talk about it a lot, but I think longtime listeners of the show sort of know my feelings on purpose and passion and so on and so forth. But with that said, um, I'm a big fan of sort of sharing where I'm at in life and the things I'm struggling with because I think those are the most relatable episodes. And so this episode is going to be one of those where I sort of share uh, the the circumstances that led to creating this episode with the hopes of uh, helping you through whatever it is you might be going through. Now, with that said, before we jump into the episode, be sure to take the survey. This is the last week to enter for a chance to win one of three $50 Amazon gift cards. I am going to be shutting down the contest uh, at the end of this month, January 31st, and I'm doing the drawing completely randomly on February 1st. So uh, make sure you head over to tinyleaps.fm slash survey. Take the five minutes, fill out the survey. Let me know your thoughts so that I can make better content for you and so that you'll be entered for a chance to win one of three $50 Amazon gift cards. That's tinyleaps.fm slash survey. So finding your purpose. Now, uh, what sort of sparked this question for me? Um, so as many of you know, I moved to New Hampshire from New York City uh, back in August of 2019. And the reason for the move was so that Rachel, my girlfriend, could attend a PhD program that she uh, got into. So we're here through the next couple of years until she's finished with the program, and then we'll sort of see where we end up. Now, we've been together for seven years now. We've known each other for eight years, and we've been living together for, I believe, five years. So it's a fairly serious relationship. It's it's one of those relationships that we are very obviously getting married. It's just really a question of when. Um, and so once she decided she wanted to go back to school and uh, uh, pursue a PhD, I was more than supportive. You know, I that is of course, and I'm fortunate that this podcast and the rest of the work that I do doesn't have to be in any one location, and so I'm I'm able to just sort of pick up and come along with her and, and support her for the next few years as she does this uh, very difficult task that she is undertaking. Now, all of that is totally fine, and all of that makes perfect sense. Where it becomes difficult is that I sort of underestimated how extreme the move was actually going to be, uh, leaving New York City, a place that is uh, sort of constantly connected, constantly on, constantly uh, hectic, and almost the epitome of that hustle, hustle, hustle mentality, um, to come to a place like New Hampshire that is uh, far less that. Um, it, it's not uh, as connected. It's not as lively. Um, now, it has its benefits, right? I'm, I've actually really enjoyed living here. I'm much more connected to nature. I'm much more able to uh, utilize the space that we have. You know, the recording studio that I'm in right now wouldn't be possible in New York City. So uh, there, there are benefits to the move, but it, it was a difficult move and it has been a difficult move for me, especially because I don't really know anyone here and I don't have any means of connecting with people. Now, the reason I get into all of that is because uh, this podcast has been something I've been doing for the last four years and I've loved and hated every single minute of it at the same time. Um, it is uh, 100% something that I became passionate about. It was sort of started accidentally in a way. It was never supposed to reach the level of success that it has, um, but I've, I've worked really hard on it and I've gotten very good at it and I've been able to help a lot of people. But as part of this, the... the uh, shifting that came from this move, I have started to feel out of love with it. And 
uh, not in any way of, oh, I'm going to end it or anything like that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in this for a little while. Um, I've pre-committed to a certain number of episodes and, and I'm keeping that number personal, but I'm here for quite a, a while. Um, so it's been difficult getting up every day, working on this show, uh, putting together episodes, finding new episodes, uh, ideas, and I've sort of fallen out of love with it. And I think a big part of that is because of uh, this move, because of the change in routine and the change in environment and sort of feeling like I don't have control over my life. So that led to the last few weeks of feeling like, what am I even doing? Just sort of moving through life rudderless and with no real di direction, uh, no real goal for myself. All of the things that I tell you guys to do, uh, I haven't been doing. I haven't had a goal. I haven't had a purpose or a, a, a thing that I was working towards. There was nothing to make progress towards. And I don't operate well in that environment. I tend to get very depressed, and anxious and stressed and all of the things that you might imagine someone would go through when dealing with all of that. Um, and so a few nights ago, I, I, I and for a while I've been feeling this, I've been um, talk, having long conversations with Rachel about it, getting advice from my family and friends and the people around me that are supporting me. Um, and I've even actually started going to therapy again, which is something I hadn't done in about a year, maybe a year and a half to sort of work through some of these issues and rediscover that purpose that I, I once felt. Um, and that led to asking that question of how do you actually find your purpose? How do you actually find a reason to do things? And that led to a really interesting article by a gentleman named Mark Manson. Now, if you aren't familiar with Mark, he is the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, a book I actually have not read, but I do plan to. Uh, but I have been reading his blog for a little while now. And he does very, very long form, very in-depth articles on a lot of the topics that we discuss on this show. So if you're ever looking for a deeper dive into something, I'd recommend going to his website. It's markmanson.net. Now, he has a really great article on finding your purpose. And uh, in that article, he asks, and I'll link to the full article in the description, he asks seven very unique questions to help you pinpoint that purpose that you're looking for. And one of them jumped out at me. Uh, one of them really, really resonated with me. And that's what I want to share with you on this episode. Now, we're going to jump into that question when we get back from the break. Stick around for that. How would you feel if you saved an extra $1,500 this year without lifting a finger? That's exactly what Empower can help you do. It's really difficult to save as much money as we need to because as soon as we get extra money, it gets spent. We do the best we can with our budgets and apps to track spending, but somehow it just still doesn't work. Well, there's an app for that. It's called Empower. That's E-M-P-O-W-E-R. It's an awesome mobile app that makes saving and managing your money the easiest thing that you'll do all day. For starters, Empower has an automated savings feature. You simply tell the app your weekly savings target, and every day, Empower studies your income and spending and automatically knows when to move the right amount of money into your savings account, where you're less likely to spend it. It's called autosave. Just set it and forget it. And now you can stop Googling for answers to all of your finance questions. You can just text Empower's human coaches who give you personalized recommendations and they're on standby to steer you through whatever financial challenge might come up in your life. If you want to save $1,500 more this year, you've got to check out the Empower app. Download Empower, that's E-M-P-O-W-E-R, in the App Store or Play Store. Over 650,000 other people already have. And if you start today, listeners of this show actually have a special offer. You can get $5 for free, $5 when you use the offer code TINYLEAPS and to reach your savings goal. So to claim that $5 offer, head over to empower.me slash tiny leaps and use the offer code tiny leaps. Okay, we are back 
And uh, we're talking about Mark Manson's article and the one question that really jumped out at me. Now, I do have a link to the full article in the description of this, so make sure you check that out. But there's one big question that uh, is helping guide my thinking around what my purpose is. And that question is this. If you were to die in one year, you knew you were going to die one year from now, what would you want to be remembered for? And I don't know why this question really stuck with me, but the way that I internalized it when I first read this question from him was less about picking a thing that I want to be remembered for and more about filtering out the things that I don't actually care if I'm remembered for. So if I have a list of five things that theoretically are opportunities in front of me, and I ask that question, I pose that question against each of those things individually, I can start to understand, okay, I don't actually care about this thing. I don't actually care about this thing or this thing or this thing. And maybe one of those five I do actually care about. And that becomes a place to start. Now, does that mean that that is my true purpose in life? No. You guys know how I feel about this. I don't believe that there is one true purpose. I don't believe there is one true passion, right? We are born and then we die and everything we do in between is sort of up to us. Um, and, and so I don't actually think that uh, people are born with a quote-unquote God-given purpose. I believe that you create your purpose, but there are things we are interested in. There are things that we are curious about, we're uh, uh, angry about, we care about. And it's very difficult sometimes to know what those things are because unfortunately, Life has sort of been designed to erase all of that from us, meaning who we truly are isn't easy to reconnect with. It sort of gets squashed in the process of growing up, in the schooling and the uh, job market and, and all the things we have to go through. At some point, we get rid of all the things we used to naturally love, and so we forget them. And it's a great question to help us actually start reconnecting with some of those things. If you were going to die in one year and you knew that, what would you want to be remembered for? Would it be being a great mother, a great father? Would it be being starting this company? Would it be uh, playing video games and becoming the best at it? Would it be releasing music? Would it be painting? Like what thing? If you were going to die and in the next year you were guaranteed whatever you spent your time on would do well, what thing would you want to be remembered for? Now, I don't fully have the answer to that question yet, but I do have some of the answers that aren't it, right? I, I know some of the things that I've crossed off the list because they don't uh, uh, pass that test. And I think this question can help you as well. Maybe it doesn't help you find your purpose, but it does help you rule out the things that you are, are not your purpose, the things you are not passionate about, the things that you uh, shouldn't continue going down in any real way. So I hope that that question is helpful to you. I encourage you to check out Mark's full article. It is um, extremely, extremely well done. And he also poses six more kind of weird questions that can maybe help jog some things for you. So if you are looking for your purpose, check out his article. Click the link in the description of this episode. I've been Greg Clunas. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember that all big changes come from the tiny leaps you take every day. Every day.